After you've eaten your food, you generate waste. Yes, we're talking about poop. You don't usually think about this. You flush and forget. If you think about it, all that human waste goes down pipes in your house, joining with other wastewater, down sewage pipes, all the way to a wastewater treatment plant that converts that waste to CO2 and cleans the water so that it can be discharged to a lake or a river and not affect aquatic life. But not everyone has a modern wastewater treatment plant. 3.6 billion people around the world don't have access to safe and sustainable sanitation, toilets at home that safely manage their wastes. 1.9 billion still don't have basic sanitation services. As a result, 860,000 people, mostly children under five years old, die every year from diarrheal diseases, infections, and other diseases. There are other downstream effects for communities without safe sanitation. Children who have warm infections or suffer from diarrhea are stunted in their growth and can have impaired cognitive function and suffer from pneumonia, anemia, and malnutrition. Lack of a toilet at home causes shame and embarrassment and leads to school absence, decreased economic activity, and poverty. This is not just a problem in low- and medium-income countries. In the U.S., 1.4 million people lack access to indoor plumbing and toilets. Altogether, lack of water and sanitation causes 219,000 cases of illness and costs the U.S. economy more than $8 billion every year. This is why the U.N. Sustainable Development Goal 6 aims to achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation for all ending open defecation and paying attention to the needs of women and girls. So why don't we just solve the sanitation problem? Like the food waste problem, and perhaps more so, this is a wicked problem. We need to look at four key areas to address the sanitation challenge. First, we need to develop an enabling environment of government policies and planning and political will to address this problem. For too long, sanitation has not been discussed and prioritized. Government policies are woefully inadequate or confusing. In many countries, the lack of regulations means there's no impetus for providing for sustainable sanitation. Nations, cities, and local communities would rather build shiny infrastructure, like roads, bridges, and buildings, rather than provide for toilet infrastructure. Low-income communities are typically the ones left behind and underserved. Second, we need new technologies across the sanitation system. Technologies that span the sanitation value chain from the user interface or toilet to storage, transport, treatment, and even reuse of fecal material. We need to think about how technologies can be used to support household and small systems, decentralized systems for those communities that are underserved. Here we need engineers, scientists, and social scientists who can design new toilets with communities, new ways for treating fecal material, and converting them to energy and resources, and keeping people safe from pathogens. Third, we need to make sure that sanitation businesses can scale up because they have economic opportunities in human waste. Businesses that handle, treat, and reuse waste. Otherwise, providing for sanitation solutions and interventions will always be dependent on foreign aid. We need to scale up to address the needs of billions of people. There are opportunities in fecal material. We can produce value products from fecal sludge, including biofuels, building materials, and fertilizers. We can use clever solutions, like using the black soldier fly. This insect eats human waste and food waste and produces larvae that's high in protein. The larvae can then be harvested, dried, and used as protein for animal feed. And finally, we need to advocate for social and behavioral change. We need to educate people on hygiene. Today, because of the lack of technologies, many pit latrines are emptied manually. This is an undignified, unhygienic, and dangerous job. In some countries, lower income and lower caste workers 
are designated as pit latrine emptiers or manual scavengers. This has to stop. We need to professionalize the handling of human waste and not condemn people based on a social hierarchy. I hope we think of wastes, whether food waste or human waste, as resources that with ingenuity and new thinking we can reuse. To do that, we have to use systems thinking, link social sciences with engineering and natural sciences, and work with communities. We need bright minds like yours to help address these issues.